have a little glimmer of hope. It's, it's, they, they had it's first blood and then they gave over like 15 unanswered kills, three right. unanswered towers. Yes. Uh, I think the quote we had from the last game was, they took the first step and then forgot how to walk. So they're gonna need to come up with something here. The biggest thing for me has to still be this mid lane. The only lane that didn't receive no external shot. pressure from Illinois and still won was Zeno in the mid lane. They gave him the LeBlanc. Sure, it does have a positive win rate matchup uh, into the Ari. But Ari does have ways of winning that lane. Grab some enemy dematerializers, shove out that lane, look for the roam plays. And Budget Box just couldn't find... Wait, Budget Box is playing the mid lane now. He is. There has actually been a switch. Okay. Iron Regrets coming in. Yeah, there, uh, apparently uh, that was a sub in the mid lane with Iron Regrets going into the, the jungle now with Budget Box maybe feeling a little bit more comfortable in the mid, in the mid lane because he played a jungler that we haven't seen in a couple patches on the meta, that being Jarvan, J4. Uh, usually we see Skarner, Sejuani, Zach, um, the likes of them. Uh, Trundle even, yeah. But uh, you know, J four couple patches behind. Maybe I'm regrets has a little bit more comfort yeah. in the meta this, there's, this time around. There's certainly a very top tier jungle uh, meta right now, and it's really those big engaged tanks, some of which you uh, talked about earlier. J four said you want to just aren't in that meta. They aren't useful enough anymore. You got the Trundle, you have the Olaf, and you have the Skarner. Those three will basically carry you through. Brog is plus Italy. I've been making some more remarks, and even Tank Lame. J and Jax is available in the meta. A lot's open, but it's still all about that mid-game tanky engage potential. And unfortunately, when you pick J4, you're really doubling down that you're gonna be able to get something done early. And if you aren't able to get something done early, you do start to fall off compared to other picks going on around. And oh boy, that's a hell of a first pick coming out from Illinois. <laughs> That is a scary first pick. Something that was banned away in the first uh, first phase last game. This time around, not banned up. Swain is going to be able to take that, uh, uh, go, go on to Illinois. Something that, you know, Illinois, they show if they have the tools, they can make something, they can build something spectacular. And they just got one of the best uh, champions in the game right now, Swain. Gonna see if he goes to that in top lane or mid lane. Are they gonna go right back to the Zaya? Okay, no, they okay, they do yeah, switch it up. They do pick away the Morgana as the Kalen is still on the board as well. But that definitely, I'm just still not a fan of this. I feel like Zaya has really fallen down the meta as of late. Sure, she is able to wave clear somewhat, especially against hyper carries. But this is not the meta hyper carry. This is the meta of early game aggression. Kalen plus Jin are the clear top tier picks right now. And North Georgia's team competitions, their champion pools really might start to get exploited. Yeah, actually, we did see Rakan being banned out, so that's actually a little bit of a nod from Illinois to Momo on the bot side, getting that first blood. They actually want to uh, kind of take away that sort of long-range aggression that he's able to dish out, because maybe, like you said, they got that first step, didn't know how to walk. Maybe they've uh, you know learned how to take a few more steps and possibly get Illinois on the back foot with that first blood. It's a uh, kind of a fat chance, but something that, you know, you don't want to take the risk of, so they're going to ban away that Rakan. Nami locked in for Ginormous Noob. Meanwhile, Orn being locked in for Nimerit. I like that a lot better than the Tomkin. This is a far better pick in the top lane. Not only is Orn able to trade with a majority of champions whose names Hi. aren't Nar or Orn, right, whose names aren't Nar or Scion or Camille, uh, although those are still on the board, he has a decent laning phase, and he's still a really good team fighting tank, especially against champions who aren't named Braum as well, so... Uh, certainly opening up North Georgia to still play that team fight style. Now the big issue is how do they get to the mid game? The key to the mid lane always seems to be the mid lane rather, just being able to push out, being able to roam around, get things rolling. But uh, something needs to change here very quickly. Curious to see what those mid p picks are when we finally get around to them. Now that North Georgia do have the counter picks, so they can pick the optimal matchup well, here in the mid lane. No, I'm just mad. With Zazir and Anivia being banned, those are not going to be in the mid lane. Also, Galio and Rise. So a lot of potential coming out on this mid on this mid pick. Actually, now that I say that, we have to remember that uh, the Swain could potentially go to the top lane against mm -hmm. Orn. So if Topopotamus is comfortable putting that into an Orn, might be playing that on the top side. But definitely a flex pick could still be seen a mid lane. But if not, we are going to see being a be seeing a top lane for Illinois. Definitely, yeah. we need a mid lane from North Georgia as well. They're going to double Jarvan down to J4. All right, so this is going to be a different jungler. Hopefully, I'm Regrets is going to be able to get something done with this. But also, another thing is that now that there's no Morgana to go up against in the bottom lane, the chance of bot lane ganks going right are far more likely. Plus, the Orn in the top lane instead of the... Uh, something like the Tom Kench is much easier to actually engage on. So they're opening up more of those options. The problem was, last game, North Georgia took approximately zero of those chances. They didn't try any of those plays, didn't get anything out of it. But now, 
if they're going to make this same composition work, they need to finally take some of those risks, find some of those plays, and take some of that setup as well. But uh, more picks coming on out. Does look like that could be a top lane Swain. A mid lane Swain rather than says get locked in, but... Okay, this actually leaves absolutely everything to flex. Oh, actually, you know, you're right. Yeah, I mean, I've been seeing a lot more Cyan mid. Cyan can go in the mid lane, especially against some of these very aggressive kill-based lanes. You are not going to kill a Scion as a Cinder. That is just a fact, unless you bring basically the entire cavalry with you. Um, I mean, Swain also holds up pretty darn well. Very tanky, able to facilitate the ganks, especially with Trundle, given that you can activate the Swain passive to pull off of the pillar. So certainly a lot of gank potential here coming out uh, for Trundle for the side of Illinois. It is now in North Georgia's court to actually convert on their gank potential. They've got Morgana, they've got Syndra, they have Orn. These are literally the easiest lanes in the gank to set up for ganks. They need to find something, though. Yeah, not to mention their team fight is still pretty all right as well as far as their engage goes. Jarvan, also known as a great engager as far as team fights, and Orn with the Call of the Forge God, very adept at engaging. So is Scion. And yeah, you were talking about mid lane uh, Swain and Trundle synergy with the pool and the pillar. That's actually going to be doubly for a budget box of Syndra. Syndra has no sort of escape, so has to be very careful with the flash in that mid lane and also positioning yeah. because one misposition, you can just be completely destroyed by the troll and the Noxian commander. That isn't certainly true, and uh, the flash was something that we saw in North Georgia were not very conservative in blowing basically every single gank. They see the jungler, they flash away. We're on the side of Illinois. They cap the flash until the last possible moment. Don't give regrets anything to operate on for the next time around. And also just look at these lanes as well. It is not fun ganking a Sion. It is not fun ganking a Swain. Uh, two very difficult lanes actually pull things off there. So you got to start looking down towards the bottom side of the map. And that might be where North Georgia are finally going to feel comfortable playing. They got the first blood down there the first time. They kept the Caitlyn under control in game number one. But now they need to find something to exploit. Very much so. And yeah, the Dark Binding and Black Shield are so pivotal in that bot side, like you said, with ganks. And especially with Trundle. Because Trundle, you have that Dark Shield. And you can just literally just walk around his pillar. It's no problem. Even if you don't have any gap closers... It's really not a big deal if that whole thing, the whole purpose of that pillar is to slow. And if it doesn't slow, then that's going to be your gank, your gank essentially wasted. But of course, Nami is going to be there as well. And you have uh, Yordle Snap Traps to follow up with that. It's one of the biggest synergies along with Dark Binding and, and Snap Traps as well. So they're stick, sticking with that on the bot side of Illinois. And I think they used it quite a bit last game with the Dark Bindings and the Snap Traps. And I think they're going to just be kind of the same thing with the Aqua Prison. But as I talk about that, we are counting down. I want to give another shout out to our plugs, our social medias, our sponsors. Once again, have explanation point. I almost said hashtag explanation point Discord in the chat. You can uh, follow us on Discord and be part of the community in our, our community events. And also follow us on Twitter at twittercom League and twittercom lol if you just want Collegiate League of Legends specific material. You can also follow us on Facebook at facebook.com slash League. And anything you want to view that you missed over the past weeks, months, you can go onto our YouTube. Actually, years. We have our YouTube, youtube.com slash League. We have VODs dating all the way back to our dream hack in Austin two or three years. Actually, I think it was three years ago at this point. So a lot of material over there on our YouTube. And of course, I want to give a shout out to Twitch. Twitch, would, uh, we wouldn't be here without Twitch. They've been cultivating the collegiate esports scene for years. Thank you very much for doing that. Go follow them on twitter.com slash twitch and facebook.com slash twitch. Have one more as well. That being our juice batteries. If you ever play a game with a wireless controller, whether it be wireless controller, wireless mouse, wireless keyboard, and your batteries run out mid game, Keep that from happening by using juice batteries. Those are six times of uh, the battery power of normal batteries, along with two times the um, charge rate of normal batteries. So check those out. Never have your controller, your peripheral die again due to depleted battery juice. Juice battery, go check them out. Other than that, we're about to get into game number two, Nebessa three. This is a uh, yeah round robin, North Georgia versus Illinois. It's uh, it's going to be uh, it's definitely an uphill battle for North, North Georgia. Yeah, I mean, just looking at game number one, the results, it was not pretty. They could not get anything done in the early game. Zeno literally ran every single member of them over, and especially Budget Box in the jungle didn't do anything. So, uh, game number two, game plan, do something. If they can start off making some plays, maybe they can find uh, ways to string a few together, get those flashes, make the ganks actually happen. Once again, 
all the tools are available for them. This isn't a horrible draft, sure. It may not be the most meta thing in the world, but you can definitely pull off some disgusting team composition, some great team fighting with this, but uh, now Illinois have also put the shoe on the other foot, and they are now the ones who are going to be looking for a lot more of this team fighting potential with the big, beefy tanks in the front line, uh, bringing out the Swain, bringing out the Kalen also to round out the team fight composition, so it it's still on University of North Georgia to get this game off to the right foot, but uh, unfortunately, if history has anything to say about this, not gonna look too pretty yeah the swain is extremely powerful in the mid lane and a big exclamation point uh for north georgia's drafting phase something that you do not want to let go and when you have first pick on the blue side that is something you kind of have to ban if you're on the red side in order to take that away from that first pick potential of illinois in this game number two so uh, Zeno, he did fantastic on leblanc and i expect nothing uh, nothing less on the swain Swain, that big beefy, just absolutely, it's so hard to kill Swain as we have a pause in the game. There was a crash yeah. from Momo, but he's already reconnected. But yeah, should be getting into this game pretty soon here. Uh, so, so first thing I want to uh, point out here, at least for the builds, for those of you guys who didn't quite see it, in the mid lane budget box on the Cinder matchup versus the Swain did take the minion dematerializer, also took the uh, stopwatch. Mini Dematilizer is not something you normally see on Syndra, but I understand the idea behind it. You want to be able to have that pushing power in the lane. Swain can be shoved in quite easily, especially with something like Syndra. Go go back, grab the last chapter. All of a sudden, you have so much mana sustained throughout that laning phase. You're able to push him in. Obviously, you're maybe not going to be able to kill him immediately, but if you're able to coordinate some of these ganks now with a budget box starting to push on into the laning phase, have that jungle pressure. I'm Regrets. Moving down to the bottom as well, you can pull off some great ganks on this bottom side of the map. Hell, I want to see North Georgia pull off the five-man bottom lane play before the 10-minute mark. I think that's how they finally can get into this game. Yeah, that's something we did not see last game. Well, yeah, the big meta is, of course, in the mid lane. Push the wave and then roam. Something we did not see from a spirit animal. A budget box coming in from the jungle of game number one. Now into the mid lane with Syndra. Maybe seeing that one, like you said, with the mini dematerializers, being able to help him push that much more into Swain, who has a little bit of difficulty in the early going. We see a grouping from North Georgia. Last game, we saw them grouping in the tri bottom tri brush when they're on the blue side. This time, they're going to be going into that river brush. Maybe trying to catch somebody out, but once again, Illinois, they're actually drawing a line of scrimmage. And now that I mentioned it, Zeno and uh, Minsu actually going to be playing uh, special agent men here, going into the red side of North Georgia's jungle. Maybe yeah, this is a very questionable out. early game strategy coming out from North Georgia, just because they very clearly have the invade potential. If you want to use that, if you want to stack, go in for it. There is no way in hell Illinois is going to try and invade only having the Nami uh, and Minsu's Ooh. trying to pillar in terms of CC, but... Nimrod oh, showed no. himself there, and he's going to be caught up. Knocked he got up by Topopotamus, and he is going to go down. Who's picking up that kill? It is going to be Minsu. He is also going to pick up the red buff as well. Yeah, now we got to keep our eyes on Arm Regrets. He still, of course, can go for the level 2 gank very early on in the game, knowing that uh, Minsu is absolutely nowhere to be found on this top side of the map, but where does he go next? Does he try to steal away the red buff? Does he try to pull off the triple camp... Clear. Ooh, be a little bit careful. Yeah, North Georgia. I'm uh, sorry. Uh, yo, North Georgia have the Morgana, so you have to respect that one. Ginormous Noob getting hit with a Dark Binding and getting chunked quite heavily. And now, Budget Box. He's actually getting collapsed on. Has to blow his flash. That is so Ooh. huge. So many flashes in. Oh, I'm going to say so many flashes, but so many summoners already. That teleport Nimaret in the top lane, that is huge. And now, Budget Box in the mid lane on Syndra with the flash even bigger. When you're looking at the way all these top teams like Illinois, all the big boys at the table, perform so much of their early game dominance, it's through investments and returns. Good smite there away from Minsu, gonna keep his own red buff. Yeah, he's actually, so he's gonna have the advantage going into this one right here as there's collapse coming in. I'm Regret, he's gonna have the, uh, the uh, Ignite put down on a flash over the wall by both I'm Regrets and Giant Number Snoo. Giant Number Snoo picking up that kill and now the displacement and root onto Budget Box who has no flash. Minsu, he's getting in there with Zeno, picking up the kill for Zeno on the mid lane of Illinois. 3 0 already before the three minute mark. This is absolute travesty now out from the representatives from the Peach Bell Conference. You could not ask for a worse early game so far for this matchup. So going back to what I was talking about before, the thing that separates out the top early game teams from just the average to, to even bad early game teams is the fact 
of investments and return. You make investments by going for those early ganks, forcing out the summoner spells, and then you get the return by returning to the lane, starting to play around the lack of summoner, the lack of teleport, and you just take that small disadvantage and you explode it into something massive. And right there, you had a pretty good investment coming out for the Illinois squad. They got the mid lane flash. They knew they had the advantage. We're on the other side. North Georgia, Budget Box tries to push up in that jungle with absolutely no support, doesn't plan anything out, gets nothing back for it except for more hardship and the death. And now, North Georgia already in this game are going to find themselves three kills down and a massive disadvantage for the jungle especially. Nine Regrets having a hard time, Budget Box having a hard time, speaking of which, Nimrit also having a hard time. Those are the three kills, or three deaths I should say, on the side of North Georgia as Zeno He's once again, there's the combination that we talked about, the pillar and the displacement coming out from Zeno and Minsu. And that is going to equate to another kill for Zeno in the mid lane. They have that mid lane scouted so well. And already we talked about how the key to this game for North Georgia was that bottom lane. The, almost the way you get into the bottom lane is a shoving mid lane and good jungle gangs coming out. And now both of those things have been effectively shut down. Regrets is so far behind in his jungle clear because of that early game play and now Budget Box, still with no flash, mind you. It's only 16 CS, two deaths already to his name, but they're gonna try to play anyway. Regrets, he's looking for a very desperate... There's a teleport coming down? There's a teleport coming down from Xeno. It's actually, I think it was canceled? Yeah. Yeah, it, yeah, it, it was mostly now. it was mostly just to protect the bottom lane, because trust me, Illinois knows exactly what the win condition for North Georgia is. They are protecting this bottom lane at all costs, and if no advantage can be gained here by Quick Crit and Hirai, Oh boy. There's just not much left in Nim. Nimrit, he's gonna Trying go down. straight out. Where is he? No, no, it's actually his shield's gonna be popped, so he's not gonna be able to burst that one in the face of Nimrit. Nimrit needs to be careful though. He doesn't have teleport, so if he goes back, he's gonna be losing huge. But if he dies, he's gonna be losing even more. And here comes and here comes Top Bottomus with the Q, gonna be able to pick up the kill underneath the turret, take a couple shots, and just walk out. Now a budget box and I'm regrets gonna come up, but I don't know if they're gonna be able to pick up anything. Top of Top of Bottomus is level six, so he has that charge to get out and they're just gonna back off completely, and he's gonna go back a very happy Scion. Exactly, now five kills on the map, pressure absolutely everywhere, and North Georgia still need to look at which lanes can they use to generate pressure. You still do have Quick Crit and Harai, who haven't gone too far behind. No one's backed yet, so no real discrepancies, both ADCs with absolutely no potions, and everyone with every summoner spell except for Harai's splash here on the bottom portion of the map, but with absolutely no help coming soon from the jungler, from the mid laner, once again, it might already be uphill without a paddle. Ooh, black that paddle rather. Yeah, that paddle is completely broken and the holes are in the boat right now as their black shield is already used. There's nothing to protect quick crit from being ganked and flanked on the back side. Now they're just gonna go walk through the turret. Minsu taking up the turret shots here. And they might just be shoving down this turret early. Six and a half minutes. Illinois looking for the first turret of the game. They're wanting to rush this game so quickly. And look at Momo, he's actually just kind of going covert operations here and trying to get back into his own base. Yeah, he wanted to make sure he didn't die on the play, but unfortunately there's absolutely nothing he can do to stop this first tower of the game going down at 6 minutes and 39 seconds. And given that Illinois is a team that wants to play the team fight stage, they have the big beefy tanks and one damager on the back line. They are extremely happy with us falling so early on the game. This means they're going to be able to rotate around, deny away the potential roaming ability of Budget Box, of Regrets, just because they now have to deal with all these very long shoving out lanes. This is absolutely just even a worse turn of events, a worse sequence of events for this Northern Georgia squad. Uh, top bottom is kind of on a one-man mission right now. He is. He might be able to do it, though. He is quite beefy, but he is a 1v3. Zeno there coming up. He has his but you know, uh, he has his ultimate he, if he wants to use it. He has souls stacked up. He's going to go in and tower dive this one, waiting for the supernova. The supernova has to charge up, and he's still going to be able to get that one and keep a hold of his ultimate, so he still has supernova to use. Ooh. A big pillar going to block Nimerit from engaging in onto top of Potamus. Very nice play, but now Momo coming up from the back, from the bottom side. Who's going to pick up the kill on the top of Potamus? Top of Potamus. No he way. Has no oh, way! He's got oh! oh! Okay. Tap, in the midair with the red buff. Gonna take out top of bottom it, and now dark binding onto Zeno. Illinois overstaying their welcome, overstepping their presence here. And they're going to pay for it with two deaths. But they do pick up a couple in their own name as Nimerit goes down in the uh, in the end there. Yeah, unfortunately Illinois might have been flexing their muscles just a little bit too hard as two members are going to be falling as a result. 
That being said, 3.5k gold in the lead at 8 minutes with the team fighting composition is still absolutely nothing to scoff at. The question now just becomes how quickly do these next few towers go on over? Illinois already moving the bot lane duo up to the top side, getting the Caitlyn pushing down that top tower. It's honestly not going to last for long. They really need to come up and respond to this from North Georgia, or at least try to trade it out somewhere, but they have no points of pressure to even leverage. No, no, not at all. Quick crit and Momo not having a great time. Momo's not even level 6 yet. Of course, now that I say that, Giant, uh, Giant Norse Noob is not either. Nice blue suede shoes coming out from Project 1, blocking or dodging out of that dark binding. Doesn't want to give anything over to North Georgia, even with this high of a lead, this big of a lead. 61 CS to 47, a BF sword to a cull. They still don't want to give anything over to North Georgia to give them the opportunity to come back in any sort of fashion or form. As we see, I'm Regrets hanging out on the top side, not looking to do too much though, as Zeno also meeting up his brethren. Going to be making sure that's an even matchup on the top side, but there is Minsu as well. Very nice. It's Pillar going to be knocking back Momo, but he has to flash over it just to get out of the way. And now we have four strong on the top side for, uh, for Illinois. And it's still just all falling apart. Good rotation so far from Northern Georgia to at least protect the top lane for now, but honestly, I'm not sure how long it's going to last. And Nim. Uh, Nimra, Nimrit, brother. He's going to go down. Top turret going to go down in favor of Illinois. And there is Zeno. He is a giant predator with that ultimate. He is going to burst and take down Quick Crit. Actually, it was Mitsu picking up that one. Giant Norris Noob going on the supportal combat, picking up Momo on the backside as well. And now this inner top lane turret is exposed. Really nothing North Georgia can do about it. Exactly. When you lose their early game like that, when the other team starts making these early game rotations, you have nothing to respond with. You need some sort of pressure saying, okay, if you put five people in top lane, we're at least going to take your bot lane tower. Illinois can do whatever they want right now because there is nobody who can even look at the other side of the map right now. All the fours got coming in. I'm not really sure if it's going to equate to anything. Nimrit is two levels down below top of not This isn't mention. looking good. It's not looking good, not whatsoever. <laughs> Top Bottomus can just walk out. He's not even going to pay any mind to Nimmer. Right? Not going to uh, knock him up or anything. Not even going to try to turn that around. He's going to walk out. And now Zeno, he is in the mid lane shoving this one. Has a nice wave to his name, but not much support from his teammates. So going to back off after shoving that one. He has quite a bit of gold to spend. Uh, 1,000, not a huge amount, I guess, but still enough to pick himself up his uh, Mercury, uh, Mercury Treads. Make sure he's just a little bit tankier against a budget box if he decides to ult him. 6k advantage still holding extremely strong for Illinois. Rift Herald is still on the board. First dragon of the game hasn't even been taken yet, and that is that Windrake. Certainly would help with the rotations, but uh, you know what also would help this team close out this game? More towers and more gold. And that's something that North Georgia is wanting to prevent, but Illinois may tell them that they don't have a choice as they pressure in onto this mid lane turret. Oh. There's not too much to work with, though. Oof. Yeah. <laughs> Savage chat. Yeah. Oh, wait, 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 really? Yeah, I'm not, not going to even look at that one. Sometimes you don't want to look at how savage somebody could be. As we see a banner command minion in the mid lane, that cannon minion is going to be so hard to clear, especially for Syndra here. So much damage it can absorb. And hold on, we might have an engage. I'm regrets. He's going to go in. Cataclysm on the project. He can actually flash out. Teleport coming in from the Nimerit. Call of the Forge God is not up though, so there's really nothing much that he can do besides get in the face of everyone and try to zone everyone out. North Georgia gonna fall back underneath their turret because that engage did not happen in their favor. Meanwhile, this entire time, by the way, Minso, Minsu, he's just been taking up the, the Rift Herald by yeah. himself, so now he has that to work with. And still for North Georgia, it doesn't matter how much they disengage, they oh. don't have anything to turn around with. The the flank from Zeno on the on the uh, from the jungle on the backside, he is going to be able to pick himself up. Possibly a double kill. There it is, a double kill for Zeno, and this is just the towers of North Georgia crumbling under the might of Illinois. This is hard to watch if you're a North Georgia fan. And they're not done just yet. Shelly is still going to be pushing down this one. Budget Box and Harai still not quite here on the fight. I don't think this engage is really going to do much. No, not whatsoever. There's that previous engage did not work. Minso might go down, though he does have subjugate. He is using to yeah, heal himself back up, and every time someone dies, he gets a little bit more health. He stays alive. Project and Zeno picking up a kill. <laughs> the Rift Herald is still alive, by the way, and it's bashing away in onto the mid lane inhibitor. There, Illinois, they are not stopping. It's 13 minutes, by the way. There is nothing on the side of North Georgia. Look at the builds coming out. Budget Box, he has absolutely no budget to work with. He only has the lost chapter. 
On ADC Quick Crit, you only have the Caulfield's Warhammer. There is no damage existent, and when you have no damage, you are not going to kill the 6, 1, and 5 Swain. And things are just snowballing completely out of control with an 11k gold lead still going over to Illinois. Man, it's 13 minutes in. The Baron is not an option. There's a Cloud Drake. Illinois don't even care about that. They may take it just for good measure, but there's the base is already broke, broken open for North Georgia. Mid lane inhibitor down. They've tried two engages, not worked out in their favor. It's just been counter engaged by Xeno. Demonic Ascension is so powerful right now, especially with that supernova. Everyone grouped for North Georgia. And Xeno can just explode them so easily. Like you said, six, one, and five. He is a monster. Okay, 13 minutes into this game, we do want to take a quick look back at our winning conditions for the match. Basically, looking at the Illinois side, they've been doing absolutely everything right. Get that advantage, group is five, and just shove down people one by one. I mean, honestly, you're also at the point where Swain, with a TP for Zeno, could just split push. He has that much of a lead where it doesn't really matter, but they can get the most done as one big group. And with Bear not even up yet, only the side waves pushing, a 1-4 composition really wouldn't be too bad for them. Put Zeno on that side wave, and the second you hit that tower in the top lane, bring him over, force the five-man dive in. There's still absolutely nothing that you can do if you're North Georgia. All you can do is pray that you're still going to be able to farm, pray that you don't all die, and pray the game doesn't end. It looks like they are going to do a 1-4 split, except with Topopotamus doing the splitting instead of Zeno. Looks like they are prior prioritizing the Zeno, the Swain, 6-1-5 Swain at they that. They got the banner of command. He yeah. is a split-pushing monster. Bow absolutely. down to your new item lord. <laughs> Very much so. This is the meta. It is, and this is Illinois running away with this game, using the meta to... Oh, look at that fullest. damage. I know, that it doesn't take that much damage either. Not only did they... Did they the reason why, of course, yeah. is they bought the cannon minion, and it takes so much more to actually destroy without the banner command, and now with the banner command, exactly. you have pushing Scion, one just destroying a turret by himself. Ooh. You're seeing quick crit up in the top side here. North I'm Georgia. Sure. Yeah. North Georgia need to find some sort of engage right now and hope that it goes right, because if they wait any longer, there will not be a base left to defend. And basically, if you lose three oh towers, gosh. the game's already over. Or three it inhibitors, rather. Over. The game may be over right here, as the bot lane inhibitor turret is Gotta be the last down. stand. Yeah, last the Alamo. stand. It's, I don't know if it's going to turn out that well for North Georgia. And of course, they had a, they have to have a stand to actually show that it's the Alamo. There's not much going on for them in this game thus far. There's a flash from Momo just oh. to avoid a last death. <laughs> Unstoppable onslaught coming in from top to bottom. There's Call of the Forge God. Here's their chance to mount something. They knock up two members, but that's it. And no engage coming out from that. They are so afraid. They don't want to go in. Nimrod, he, uh, Nimrod I should say, going to try something. I regret. Here's the last thing we were looking for. And here are the last deaths that Illinois were looking for. Top and bottom is picking up that one. More, uh, Momo also going down after that one. And the last Nexus turret standing. It is also falling as I say that. And that is going to expose the Nexus. Illinois, 2-0. Easy cleanup. A sub 17 minute game in game number two. They've had the stats, but still. Yeah, they are. Looking to end this one out eventually. It's it's definitely on there over for Illinois. They're going to be very happy with a definitive 2 0 victory, two sub 20 minute wins uh, over their North Georgia counterparts. And that's a great way to set yourself up in the first match of the round robin. Very, very much so. They 